Welcome to the Larry Kreider's Leadership Podcast. Larry is the author of over 40 books, the founder of Dove International, a worldwide family of churches and ministries in six continents, and has over 50 years of leadership experience. He and his guests will share inspirational leadership insights from their journey with God. These insights, gleaned from serving leaders in many nations, will transform your life and leadership. For more information on Larry's books and resources, visit LarryKreider.com. Welcome to the Larry Crider Leadership Podcast. Larry Crider here again in the studio with me today are Dwayne and Raina Britton. Welcome back, Dwayne and Raina. Awesome. Thank Glad you. to be here again. Yeah. We just had some great discussions on leadership and you're married, how that all works. But today I want to focus mostly on you, Raina. I want to focus on what's it like to lead in what's often called a man's world in leadership. All right. Well, um, I am a woman leader, and I know that my most comfortable, my most uh, enjoyable role in leadership is not the primary leader. Um, I, I have led um, teams, and I have been the primary leader on that level, but to lead an organization is not something I would want to do. Uh, I've been asked to lead boards. Um, I like serving on boards. I love governance. But I don't want to be in the lead position because I love, my whole joy is coming alongside people and helping them be successful. So I love, I mean, I've served a lot as vice chair um, and I serve wholeheartedly to, you know, at the pleasure of the board as a whole, but also what can I do? What can I bring? What perspectives? And so I get a joy seeing them, you know, perform well and lead well and knowing that I have a role in it, but I don't carry it because it's... I, you know, I described it to um, the um, CEO who asked me why I chose not to lead the board. And I explained, you know, the fact of to lead a, a dynamic large board um, takes a lot of preparation. You live in the moment, right, with what, what the agenda is, but you're reading the people at the table. You know where something needs to be added, where somebody needs to be drawn in. And I feel like I have so much to contribute that if I get in that process-oriented functional role, that there's parts of me that are yearning to contribute that I'm not able to. I've known you guys for more than 40 years, and we've been in leadership together in so many realms, And but I never knew that about you because you're such a good leader. You're a dynamic leader, and I always assumed that you would, would love to take the primary role or you're willing to take a secondary role. You didn't really care. That is intriguing to me. That's why I serve so well with Dwayne. <laughs> right. <laughs> because he does the primary sure. leader really well. He does. And I bring a lot in uh, supporting, enhancing strategy, ideas, prayer. And I love to see him, you know, to, for me to present that. He takes what he feels is appropriate and he runs with it. And I feel like my job is done and I'm mm -hmm. happy. <laughs> I'm happy. <laughs> <laughs> Dwayne, how have you seen Raina grow in her leadership over the years? Oh, my goodness. Uh, Raina was, when we first started um, in ministry and things, uh, Raina would not, we would be in a group of people. She yeah. would not stand in the circle. She would literally be standing really? behind. And That's I a would, Raina that I don't know. That's exactly. amazing. Exactly. And I would actually literally put my elbow on her and push her into the circle. Really? That's why she did not have that confidence to even be in a group, a casual mm -hmm. group there, uh, in a circle there. So I've, from that place and where she is today, phenomenal. To be at a, uh, to be leading a team that is actually deciding on the award, Malcolm Walter Award, that the president is going to be of the United States, right. going to be presenting, and she's leading a team that's night and day. That is amazing. Yeah. So talk to us more, Rena, about what it's like to lead in what's sometimes called a man's world in leadership? That's a great question, especially in Lancaster County here in Pennsylvania, right, right. because it is a very patriarchal right. um, culture where men are seen as leaders and women are seen as helpers and you know worker bees and, and doers. And um, so I've come up against um, how to navigate that environment in very practical ways. One of them was, and you know, um, was invited to serve on this multi-million dollar board. Um, and you know, after I was on it for a year or two, I started when I was on the executive team, especially, I you know teased the guys who were there and said, you know, I was the only uh, non-white male uh, and not, not in a suit 
you know, that served right. on the board. Right. And so they laughed about it. But um, what I see is that it's not intentional on the part of men. I think it's what they've been used to right. is to being in decision-making roles and not necessarily drawing women in or relying on them to add value to what it is that they're doing. And so I see that I get the opportunity to bring perspectives um, in a way that is professional, uh, in a way that I'm prepared, non-threatening, um, mutually respecting um, the men, and then acting and bringing value that benefits the whole. And so, you know, my greatest joy is to be asked um, to contribute, to be asked what my thoughts and perspectives are, um, and then, you know, not only wait to be asked, but then to learn to offer and using the right timing. Mm -hmm. um, I operate with what I call uh, the power of wise, well-timed questions. Yeah, talk about that. What is that? So asking a question can be so powerful because when you work in um, organizations, um, especially entrepreneurial-led organizations, these fellows, and they're mostly fellows, you know, in, in our world, uh, increasingly more women, but mostly fellows, um, have strong ego strength. And, okay. you know, when I say strong ego strength, it's not a negative thing. Often it's their temperament, it's their wiring, it's their giftings. And um, so they're not used to being challenged or um, they're not used to sitting as a peer amongst other people. So if you ask a question, uh, it's not seen as threatening. It's not seen as taking alternative route or steering things in a different direction. Asking a question causes people to pause to give thought, mm -hmm. and then to respond. Mm -hmm. um, a first example I can think about that is it was serving as a nurse uh, in the ICU. We were in a procedure room, and this patient was crashing, and it was very intense. And so um, it's a lot of clinicians in the room, and the cardiologist who was in charge at that time uh, of the patient and of the procedure that was being done needed uh, an imaging person in the room who was late in coming because mm -hmm. they were on another case. And so I was in charge of the pa It was my patient. And so this physician was very angry. His body language, his facial expression, everything. He says, pick up that phone and call that person now and tell him to get here. Or, and he had some kind mm -hmm. of uh, intimidation thing. And I just stopped and I said, do you really want to do that? And so it just, the question caused mm -hmm. him to change direction. His anger lowered. The group, the, it's like a balloon and the pressure went mm -hmm. out of the room because mm -hmm. er, the in, in atmosphere changed sure, and the person walked in and we were able to do what we were able to do. So that and then serving in a, another capacity where you have a leader, um, if you're listening to what people are saying, even though they're different viewpoints, and then you state what I'm hearing but need more clarity on mm -hmm. is this, it causes people to think about what has been said, where it is we're heading, and where are we now. Okay. And so it just brings a broader perspective and causes people to pause. Wow. So tell us more about what it's like being in this quote-unquote man's world and again, with the way you're wired, I mean, do you think it's easy for you because of the way you're wired? What, what, what do you tell women who are called to be uh, the number one person, are called to lead the teams, are called to lead the board? Mm -hmm. What do you tell them? I think assessments are so huge. Okay. It starts with knowing um, who you are, what you bring your value, and your strengths. Because those things can't be taken away from you, right, right? right? And so if you're armed with that knowledge, I'm bringing this, I add value because I have this mm -hmm. ability or this knowledge, mm -hmm. um, and I have these strengths that serve me well, you're starting on a firm foundation yeah. uh, in, of self-awareness. Right. I think sometimes women act in self-defeating ways. So as I've coached some executive leaders, one of the things that I observe that women do that men don't do mm -hmm. is that women will preface what they're going to say before they say it. Men will just come straight out with, I think we need to do that. The position I see or the data says, and they just go with it. What will women say? Women will say, 
You know, after I've given consideration and thought to, I see this. Or in taking account of the people, you know, at the table or given the current circumstance, they kind of add a preface to what they're saying. And that can cause people to be more, um, what would you say, focused on what you're saying leading up to what you say versus the facts or the perspective that you're bringing. So you want to come out with it. You don't want to minimize it or take away from it by trying to tee it up. Just say it. It's been given to you. It's yours. You know it. So it it undermines confidence when you do that because you feel like you're justifying or making excuse for rather than just being, presenting, saying without any qualifiers, right? Mm -hmm. If you're asked a question, then yes, perhaps. Or you can state the fact first, and if there's something that you need to support it with, it's time to bring it in, but don't minimize it. Mm -hmm. Um, I think another thing... um, that women do sometimes is that they will apologize unnecessarily. So, you know, if a guy does something, walks into a room late, and I mean, we're not talking, we're talking fashionably late, right? Right, right. Um, Men don't necessarily make apologies for that, you know, or if they um, insert something or speak out of turn, or maybe they spoke over someone because what they needed to say was important at that time, men won't apologize and women do. Mm. So by apologizing inappropriately, I'm not saying that apologies are wrong, but apologizing inappropriately at the wrong time also puts you in a, more of a subservient mm. role versus being seen as you know a capable leader. Mm. So these things that we've been conditioned often to do can stump us up when we're serving in a leadership role, mm-hmm. right? Um, so if I'm leading the meeting and you know my admin assist or the support person is there, we have a tendency sometimes when we see things or a gap to go do it ourselves other than relying on people and giving them the direction to do it. Right. Look out over the team orchestrate people well and don't feel like it's up to you to do it like you would if you were in the mother's role. Okay. Right? Speak to Dwayne and I as men and to many listeners who are men today. What sh- should we be doing that would open doors, make a place at the table? Looking around and saying who, what women are in my purview are serving or are out there that can bring value to this. Okay. Um, that's one question. I think oftentimes people, uh, men overlook women um, who are quite capable, mm-hmm. and maybe it's because they don't know how to invite them in. Mm-hmm. Um, maybe it's a good-looking woman, mm-hmm. and that brings a, a few little, um, mm-hmm. what, static on the line, how am I going to approach this, what are my motives, how is this going to be seen? So they have to work through that, right? Mm-hmm. But if talking to a colleague and drawing someone else's and saying, hey, you know, we need somebody on this team that brings this, and I'm thinking about this person, what are your thoughts about that? You're not moving in silos, right? You're not moving Mm -hmm. alone Mm -hmm. in making your decision. I think also one is, is that how are we treating women on our staff differently than men? Okay. And asking that question, is it pay? Is it responsibility? Is it not giving them voice, not giving them visibility and presence. And, you know, I have to say quite candidly, I see churches now that are grappling with how do we bring women into leadership roles. And there's efforts to do it, but it seems token sometimes for women, right? Um, You're asking them to lead in ways that are representative but not given full-fledged leadership titles and roles. I mean, I see women sometimes working and contributing very well uh, on the team in churches doing a children's uh, ministry role or serving over a women's ministry, and they're giving titles as, as directors or managers, but might they be pastors? And so let's decide for ourselves what are the qualifications of a ca- of a pastor mm-hmm. and what women do we have serving in roles that mm-hmm. meet that. Mm-hmm. So it takes an evaluation and awareness. It's good. It's really good. Dwayne, what have you seen? You watch me and I walk through this for years. I, do. I think that, again, I go back to assessments. If you know the giftings are around the table, mm-hmm. then, the, then bring people up because of their giftings. Uh, and not just because of uh, the agenda that you may have or we need to like have, need to have a token. 
you know, what are the giftings that are on the table and where can we best see them fulfilled and, and really enhance that? I also think, too, the environment that we're in today is that, you know, um, it's, it becomes it's a touchy environment now because of the suits that are going on, inappropriateness. Mm-hmm. So something, you know, you, you know, guys can hang out and do a little be a little grunt with each other. But, right. you know, it's different. You got to be very careful even how you touch a woman today right. because it could be taken as something else than what it right, is. Right. And so it's, it's, a, it's an environment today that is a little more touchy. But again, I think we have not recognized, even out through Scripture, there's a lot of great women leaders. A lot. A lot Amazing. of great women leaders, yeah. you know, in the early church even, mm-hmm. in the Old Testament. And we don't recognize that. Mm-hmm. And I think recognizing that is so yeah. very important. Uh, and again, making that awareness that, you know, women are not subservient to per se. There are leadership gifts within That's women, right. and we need to f- let them, like uh, uh, women that are loose, is that, you know, people need to be released to be able to function in the giftings that they have. Yeah. We had Dave Hess on uh, the podcast sometime back, and he wrote a book, uh, Side by Side, uh, Men and Women Are Called to Walk Together. In fact, if you're interested in that, if you're listening today, just check out the show notes. You can pick that up. But my question, Raina, is how is all this, this whole subject, all you know, women in leadership, men in leadership, working together, how has this all helped to frame you to make you who you are? I believe... Um, being a woman in ministry and teaming with Dwayne, who is a strong leader, um, has really been helpful. Um, I've identified those areas that I do well um, and what I bring, the value that I add, and that's what I offer. Mm -hmm. And those are the opportunities that I look to serve. So it's been different for us because I've not been named as a pastor. I never didn't want to be named as Dwayne and Raina pastors of whatever. I'm very pastoral. I love pastoring people. She's more pastoral than I am, actually. (laughs) I love praying for people and being involved in their lives. Um, but I equally love governance, right? I love strategy. Right. And so um, for me, I mean, you know, my role in joy has been to serve on, on the elders board. Mm-hmm. And um, in mm-hmm. that role, you can bring governance, you can bring strategy, you can bring the pastor's perspective, but you're not leading in a pastor's role. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, I've always prayed for grace upon Dwayne because I'm more um, wired um, to work in a corporate setting and so the decisions that are delayed, the nuances of several generations, you know, a lot of the other things that get brought into decision making in a church um, don't exist in other in other realms. And so, you know, I've just prayed for a lot of grace on him, and not necessarily wanted to step in that. Mm-hmm. I'm I, I like to be contributing, um, but not responsible in that realm. Raina, for women of God listening right now, saying I do have a call to be a primary leader. Uh, do you have any advice for them as they walk through this process? I think it starts with a self-awareness because, you know, you're taking on a lot to step into a role. And I go back to that is, you know, um, the why of leadership. Why am I willing to lead? Why am I moving in that direction? And it comes out of knowing the why you're called mm-hmm. on why you're stepping into this. And it gives you purpose. And your purpose um, when you're dead set on your purpose, it's hard to be sidetracked and un, you know daunted by what other people do, and then you know get prepared. I would say, um, look for um, an intentional support person or leader. You know, um, for me, it's been important to have a lady leader that I look up to, and I see a lot of good things going on in her life and her character um, that I would want to emulate. And you know, I just press in and say, mm-hmm. hey, I believe there's things that I could learn from you. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, would you mind, you know, spending a, an hour a month with me or whatever, sure. you know, because they need to know what you're asking of them because they're busy women. Yeah. Um, and the blessing I've had is to have those women not only do that, but say that the relationship for them is symbiotic. They mm-hmm. get something from the relationship exactly. too. And uh, all of us, regardless of where we are in our leadership level, whether we're new or seasoned leader, we have things that we bring, Mm -hmm. right? Everybody has something to contribute. And um, what you have, give what you have, Mm -hmm. you know, serve with what you have wholeheartedly. And God opens doors, you know, Mm -hmm. his, His grace is on your life. And I think one of the most powerful things is that the Lord, as a woman, gives us um, grace um, right for the need of the moment that we can share what needs to be said. 
Mm -hmm. And so living fully present in the moment and not getting so bogged down on, you know, the pressure of what do I need to be doing? What do I need to be saying? You know, how does this look? We put more pressure on ourselves than what we need to. It's being and doing and relying on God that makes the difference. It really does. It can be a lonely place. It can be a difficult place um, to stand. And you don't want to be thwarted with what God's called you to do. Mm -hmm. Um, Men have vestige, you know, I mean, they have they have so many different groups Um, available to them. And, you know, women are invited to them and you can function as a peer. But to have someone who are you, you know, you are one of me and we speak the same language. We have the same challenges of balancing life. Um, We have the same challenges of, you know, kind of breaking through areas that have been male dominated. How do we encourage and learn from each other? Mm -hmm. Um, What goals do we have? And how can we hold each other accountable to our growth? Mm -hmm. That can really, really be helpful. So whether it's a small group, a small Mm -hmm. cohort, or whether it's one or two women in Mm -hmm. your life that Mm -hmm. you know you can count on, um, that you can ask questions of, that role modeling or what you're seeking, and that can ask you questions. And how has Dwayne helped you? With affirmation, uh, he calls out things that I don't see in myself, um, which is really helpful. You know, I've had in some of the roles that I've had, I tell people, you know, I've told boards and other, you know, senior leaders, I am who I am today as they compliment me. I am who I am today because of Dwayne's encouragement and belief Mm -hmm. in me. And he gives me freedom, support and encouragement to be a female leader. Actually, he encourages me sometimes um, in ways that are maybe beyond what I feel comfortable in, and I have to pray about him because he's a visionary, right? right. And so he saw me bringing to the business what I bring long before I did. Okay. And uh, I have joy in that because, yeah, what he saw truly is my strengths and what I bring, and it helps just to make us successful as a team. Britain Consulting Group wouldn't exist. Um, without, you know, my senior consultancy, you know, kind of strategy and what I bring, and nor would it be without his administrative, you know, visionary leadership role. Tell us again how how your consulting group, Britain Consulting Group, could help someone who's listening today. Well, um, we bring the opportunity for individuals to become more acquainted with what their strengths are, what Mm -hmm. they bring, what value, um, where there are opportunities for them to grow, and to see their leadership role and potential a lot clearer. Mm-hmm. Um, and then for to help them identify goals based on that awareness um, that they've gained, um, based on what it is they want to achieve, do, and how they want to grow, and then we hold them accountable to it, and we bring resources that will help them in mm-hmm. that regard. That's great. Dwayne, anything more you'd like to say about all this here as we close this podcast? I just enjoy uh, the subject matter. I think it needs to talk about more. Yeah, uh, women in leadership uh, something that, especially in the church, we shy away from. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I think uh, too that need to in us and create an environment where women can really rise up in leadership, like we do with any other person that we have. We want to see them rise up in leadership, where they don't feel they need to bust in or knock people over right. to get it. They right. got to snatch it. And I think we just, I think we have an environment that we can do that in. And I think too, we are we are in an environment today. If you if you notice the the writers and Hollywood and everything else, is that they're forcing uh, on our programs and shows. They're forcing women into leadership, the major decision makers. You know, because they want to. They have an agenda to do that, but it's not a natural agenda. Right. It's a forced agenda. Right. And I think that in the church, we can actually have it a natural agenda, mm-hmm. and show the sure. balance and, and the goodness that women in leadership can have. Excellent. Any last minute thoughts from you, Rena, before we close? I would just like to say that women are gifted, anointed, and graced Amen. by God to lead. So and as true. you said earlier, the biblical examples are so helpful. And at times, I read a, a devotional, Women in the Bible, and I draw a lot of strength out of seeing their failures, mm-hmm. right? Um, what they bring, and God's faithfulness. Mm. And the word that sticks out of all of them is, He sees me. That's so good. God sees us. God sees you. Thank you, Raina. Thank you, Dwayne, for being on the podcast again today. And I'm going to do another shout-out, Dwayne, to you, and and thank you to you for 
always introducing for these last 100 <laughs> plus podcasts. <laughs> and you guys have been great friends for so many years. And it's been fun watching the Lord continue to open doors for you. And thank you for being here today. And those mm. insights were so, so helpful. This is such, and I agree, Dwayne, this is such an important subject we must continue mm -hmm. to press into. And the men need to press into it. Amen. Because many women have told me, you know, we feel like we got to be invited to the table. And so we need to make sure we're inviting women to the table because they have so much to offer that, that we as men often need. So thank you to both of you. <laughs> God bless you both. And uh, everyone listening today, again, we do this week after week, the Larry Carter Leadership Podcast. We just try to find some small area. If you can just find one small area of your life that can change, it'll make a massive difference for you and for the kingdom of God to grow around the world. So God bless you. Look forward to having you back here with us next week. Thank you for listening to Larry Kreider's Leadership Podcast. If you want more information about any of Larry's books, daily devotionals, small group resources, or any other teachings, go to LarryKreider.com.